Okay, and we're live. I want to welcome you to the next session of the Kidney Trails Virtual Summit. We appreciate everybody that's tuning in from all of our channels, from YouTube to LinkedIn to uh, uh, Twitch and uh, Facebook. We invite you to come on in and sit down, and we're going to learn a little bit about taking technology and putting it into dialysis. And I want to introduce you to our wonderful speaker, Mr. Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson is the um, one of the owners of Lifelike, a virtual learning aid company. So I think you will enjoy this wonderful session. And to any of you that are out there in the in the Zoom room that's in with us live, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to raise your hand and we will ask that. Otherwise, we'll have Q&A at the end. Great. Thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, it's great to, uh, to be uh, here with, uh, with all of you, and um, I just I wanted to thank you, Anthony, Dwellen, um, the whole uh, Kidney Trails team for putting on uh, this, this really inspirational and, and informational uh, conference. Very much appreciated. Uh, also, I would just like to say, having just listened to Sharon's and Shante's uh, presentation, um, uh, which was just uh, previous to this one, um, just want to thank them both. That what an inspirational story to hear from um, from those sisters, and um, um, and just a, really a lot of great insight to uh, into the whole process along with their journey. So that was that was amazing. Um, my brother actually has one kidney, uh, so um, this is uh, the working in, in this uh, field is is very near and dear to my heart. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today, before I just kind of jump into some slides here, is um, basically the um, the healthcare training crisis that we have in terms of just a shortage of uh, dialysis technicians and um, nurses across America, and how that's uh, impacting the industry and and one um, solution that the state of Nevada is, uh, is offering, it's an uh, innovation that they put together that I'm going to describe to you. We're, we're part of it, but I, I don't want to, I definitely did not want to just uh, uh, focus on what Lifelike is doing, uh, my company, um, but I wanted to really just talk about um, kind of lessons learned and what we're seeing in terms of um, um, education, technology, innovation. Uh, I know there's 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 other innovation going on, of course, uh, in a lot of places, which is great to see. So we're just we're one of those. The the last thing I'll I'll say before I jump to the first slide is, I don't, I'm not a 3D artist, and I'm not a uh, I can't write a line of code to save my life. So um, I um, everything I'm going to show you, I have not built any of it. It's um, we have a team of 25 in the Czech Republic and they've built uh, everything, including actually the, the virtual background that you're seeing um, behind me, that is actually inside of the dialysis clinic that um, um, my colleagues in Brno, uh, the, our team of Czechs and Slovaks have uh, created and that uh, we're using in um, uh, uh, here in the States. So uh, let me go ahead then and um, I'll go ahead and um, move over to Looking at uh, my slides here, uh, as and I'll, I'll share those. Uh, uh, hopefully, those are are showing up okay. Um, and um, what I wanted to do was um, uh, go ahead and just really start with um, this problem that we've got right now. Um, it's happening in terms of um, the. Uh, shortage of really uh, excellent people that filling to fill these um, dialysis technician roles, uh, dialysis nurse roles, other um, uh, dialysis professional jobs in the industry. Uh, it's happening for a variety of reasons. And, um, and just like um, Sharon and Shante were talking about what they went through in a very personal way, with um, uh, with Sharon getting her um, uh, kidney transplant, um, you know all of that, of course, has a, a critical dialysis professionals that are needed uh, to run to, to work in those clinics, to work in the hospitals, and um, and there is a shortage right now, and it's not just of hiring uh, the people that are needed uh, as uh, dialysis technicians and nurses, but it's also in terms of the trainers. Uh, because a lot of the trainers have been, um, so there's been a lot of shifting around among companies um, for a variety of reasons. But really uh, what's happening is uh, this, this crisis in the healthcare education 
is partially driven, not just, um, you know, everyone thinks of COVID first, and that's had a, a profound impact, of course. Um, but, um, and it, that's really shook up the, the healthcare system in a lot of ways. Um, and, but it's also due to the flat population growth that we have in America. So um, our last year, our population growth in America was virtually zero. It was the lowest since the, uh, our, our country was founded back in the 1700s. And, um, and so we've had a lot of people leaving the industry, um, uh, dialysis professionals leaving the industry and, and not enough coming into the industry. Um, so that's really uh, led to um, this, um, the, the, this crisis that we're, we're in right now. Um, I wanna just talk about what Nevada, the state of Nevada is doing and how they're addressing this. And this is um, um, specifically now I'm, I'm focusing on the dialysis uh, role and getting more um, people to become dialysis technicians. So uh, the state of Nevada, they received a uh, $13.8 million grant uh, from the Department of Education. And um, what they've done is they have put together, they have synchronized their, all the major systems, uh, public systems, um, or, or most of, a lot of them, let's say, um, that are um, synchronized now for what's called, they call Project Sandy. Um, and, um, and this is a way to get more people who are in workforce development to, who are interested in becoming a dialysis technician to go ahead and become one. Now, they're also focusing on other um, uh, certifications as well that can be obtained uh, with workforce uh, development funding, like the Certified Nursing Assistant, um, we're, we're launching that with the community college this year as well. But um, we started with uh, dialysis, and actually, we've been partnering with a college of Southern Nevada, which is in Las Vegas, and they have an excellent um, uh, dialysis uh, technician. Um, uh, it's a 12 week uh, certification program. I'm going to talk more about that program a little bit later on. But in terms of this community of practice that the state of Nevada has put together, um, you can see here. So, what they've done is They've gone ahead and they are um, there. They have as part of this synchronized system the libraries, the public libraries across uh, Nevada. They have the community colleges involved. They have the one-stop centers, which are uh, those are the uh, workforce development centers. That if if someone you know when I've um, when I've, I've been through layoffs here, I, I live in San Francisco. If I went went through a layoff previously here in, in Silicon Valley, then I would go to a one-stop center as just as part of my uh, workforce development and, and um, going through that uh, job search process. Uh, they have a variety of uh, state agencies and then also uh, non-governmental uh, organizations. So I'm going to say a little bit more about each one of those just because I think it's important to uh, what I'd really like to highlight is that what the state of Nevada is doing is... Um, there are absolutely other states that have put together uh, their own community of practice. Um, and in, in, in some ways, those work really well. In some ways, they can be quite siloed. Um, but what uh, the state of Nevada did is the reason um, the Department of Education said that they stood out to receive this, uh, this uh, $13.8 million grant is because libraries was really a, a critical uh, player in this um, uh, 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 in this whole community of practice. So um, let me go ahead then and just explain, um, you know, uh, this is something that we're, we're literally launching. Uh, we've already started the process of launching it and it's gonna be accelerating throughout the year um, to reach full, uh, full launch next year. Uh, but um, I, I wanted to tell you the story because then perhaps you could think about in your own state, wherever you may be, um, maybe there's a way to replicate, uh, if not all of this, at least uh, replicate parts of uh, of Project Sandy um, and as a way to increase the pipeline of very critically needed uh, dialysis professionals in your own state. So what we're doing uh, then with libraries um, is um, there we're working with the academic library at every, each of the four community colleges in Nevada. So there, um, as part of this uh, project um, and one other grant, um, I'm holding up now, this is the, uh, the, uh, the PICO, this is the mobile virtual reality device that um, our simulation dialysis simulation works on. And then uh, we have, and, and they work with these, uh, these controllers. And, um, and so what happened is as part of this project, 1000 
of these uh, mobile virtual reality devices, of these Picos, 1,000 of them uh, were purchased and they um, were, uh, ownership of them was taken by the uh, four academic libraries at the four community colleges. And then they have gone and they're, they've already started the process um, and are continuing the process of doing what's called the deposit collection into the public libraries all across the state. So there are a thousand um, of these mobile virtual reality devices now um, that are uh, becoming available to anyone uh, doing a uh, looking to reskill or upskill. So anyone that uh, goes to a library, um, this is something that um, this year will become made available to them uh, because they might be doing a job search. And uh, very commonly what we hear, I've learned this from working with the College of Southern Nevada now in their dialysis tech program for three years. It's very common to hear uh, people say, I didn't even know that being a dialysis technician, that, that I didn't know that was a job, uh, that, 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 that that's a profession. Um, it's, not, um, it's not highly known, um, uh, I would say, by the average job seeker. And yet we always hear the same thing um, when from people, they're like, wow, you know, um, things like I love science when I was a boy. One one video I'm going to show you later, he Chris said that himself. Um, and they when they find out about the, um, the 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 professions in the dialysis industry, they really most people are really very interested in, and excited about that possibility. Um, uh, for a whole variety, variety of reasons that Sharon, uh, Sharon and Shante were just talking about and others that we know about, of course. These are life-saving jobs. Um, and so uh, library is going to play a, a really uh, important role, public libraries and academic libraries in Nevada, in terms of um, providing career navigation to job seekers. Community colleges. So um, there, I've, uh, we've listed the four community colleges that are part of this project in Nevada. And uh, it's the uh, College of Southern Nevada that has their 12-week program. Um, I've got more, more on that later. Uh, but uh, they're synchronizing uh, into this system all the, all the community colleges, the one-stop centers as well. So the, uh, think about the uh, Workforce Connections, which is listed there. That's the Southern Nevada Workforce Development Board, which that largely means um, uh, Las Vegas. So that's a massive uh, workforce uh, development board and they have all their one-stop centers there where people going in uh, looking for jobs, they can go ahead and um, uh, it'll be the same thing. Uh, there will, they'll be able to experience these, um, these dialysis simulation as part of the career navigation that they'll be doing. Um, and then um, I should mention as well that in Las Vegas, there are um, over, 10 uh, libraries where their one-stop centers are actually embedded inside of the public libraries. Um, but in most of the state and most, and certainly most of the country, uh, the one-stop centers have their own offices. Uh, then there are multiple state agencies that are all part of solving the solution. Uh, so uh, you can, you, I, I won't go through every one there, but certainly the Department of Education because uh, career and technical education uh, is going to be uh, is part of uh, the project Sandy as well, and that's um, both at the high school level uh, as well as uh, adult CTE programs. Um, so at the high school level, which uh, we're um, uh, working with uh, CTE high, uh, high school programs, so that they can expose their students to these um, to, to this uh, dialysis simulation, so that they can be thinking very early on at the high school level uh, about possibly becoming um, a dialysis technician. Moreover, um, what's happening, another trend that we're seeing in America is that um, um, a workforce development, uh, the exposure to it is actually happening at a younger age um, across America. And so we're actually uh, going to be um, including some middle schools uh, as, um, as part of this uh, career navigation as well to expose them to the possibility. Now they do, uh, those students for them to go into virtual reality, they should be 13 or older is the rule that we typically use. Um, but then we also have, you see the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, there's also um, the uh, Nevada Department of Corrections. Uh, certainly there's some jobs uh, that we're uh, depending on one's uh, status with, the, um, with, with corrections, um, that uh, they, certain jobs may not be available to them. Um, and, um, and, but there are certain jobs that are part of uh, Project Sandy that are absolutely available to them. The last thing I want to mention here in this um, part of the community of practice as the non-governmental uh, organizations, um, we're working with an organization called um, iFoster. It's the largest 
um, nonprofit in America to help um, foster youth and foster adults. And so they are actually part of this as well. Um, and so what they're going to be doing is um, uh, making, um, going ahead and doing career navigation, offering that to their foster youth and foster adults. Um, and um, this is particularly, this is, this is really going to be uh, valuable because I won't go into the statistics, but I've learned about foster youth, um, uh, the higher rates of, um, of homelessness um, and highest rates of uh, higher rates of poverty uh, that this population uh, uh, has compared to the general population. And so really, we just want to help uh, these folks that are um, um, interested in becoming a dialysis technician get a, a really a, a great uh, career. I'm going to go ahead and um, move on to uh, the next slide here, and then um, this is uh, really just want to highlight a lot of people when they hear that uh, the libraries are part of this, um, or they're they're surprised at first, and but then when they hear about it, they're like, well, of course, libraries should be at the center of this, um, and along with everyone else, the community and practice, because really this is the the focus for public libraries is, is to keep patrons learning and to keep them earning. What I wanna go ahead and, uh, and do now is um, I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna share a first a video here. This is Chris and uh, I'm gonna play this in a moment. And um, Chris actually entered the dialysis technician certification program um, at CSN um, for a similar reason that I alluded to a little a while ago, which is um, his uh, former wife, uh, when, when the, you know, they, she said to him, she said, Chris, um, you know, um, she works in healthcare. And she said, you always love science as a boy. Why don't you become a dialysis technician? Um, and he didn't know anything about it. He didn't and, and um, about it as a uh, as a as a career. And so uh, he he researched it. He was uh, hugely interested in it and, and entered uh, the program. And so um, he um, said one other thing before that I'll mention as well, which is he wished that he we were just setting launching our initial pilot there when he went into our simulation for the first time after he'd started his clinicals. And what Chris said is, um, you know, I really wish that I'd been able to go into this before the clinical started uh, because I was overwhelmed the first week in the clinicals. And he was working at a, a really a well-run uh, clinic in, in Vegas. Uh, but the thing is, as he said, he just felt overwhelmed by uh, having to do so much. And particularly, he said, during the changeover. He said, when you've got all these patients coming in and um, the new ones coming in for their to be dialyzed and other patients leaving, uh, he said it was just overwhelming. And he said it, if he could have gone in or a simulation, it would have helped him. Uh, really, we can call this exposure therapy. Um, so let me go ahead and play this video here. Um, Anthony, were, you're okay to, uh, it was okay, the audio was okay? What was that, Mark? Uh, the, uh, the audio was okay with that? I, I didn't actually hear it. I think it's just the way it's connection, but that's okay. You can just okay. continue. All right. Continue. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, great. Um, ho hopefully the audio was all right. Um, uh, my apologies if it was not. Uh, Chris was just, he was talking about um, how he's always loved the library and it's been a, a place that he's really learned. Um, so uh, that was really, um, um, we're, it's just, we're, we're trying to meet the, 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 the job seekers uh, where they are and to provide them with the resources uh, that they need. 
Um, now, I'm, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start to move. Um, I've kind of started in a broader way here. I'm going to move to a more uh, focused uh, way now before I end up telling you Natasha's story at the very end. Um, and what I wanted to do is just to uh, talk about the 3D assets that we're creating for the state of Nevada as part of Project Sandy. Um, and so they are, um, as you can see here, field trip videos, 3D models, uh, job shadowing and virtual reality, and, and then our dialysis training simulation. Um, so what I wanted to do is uh, the field trip videos, I'm gonna combine that with, um, a, with another video I'm gonna show you in a moment. But um, let me just go ahead and show you um, what, I, what I mean by one of our um, uh, 3D models. So I, I'm on our website now, uh, uh, LifeLikes website. This is our workforce development uh, platform. And what we've done is uh, we've created uh, 20 interactive 3D models here um, that, um, that, uh, that, that uh, you hopefully should be able to see okay. And, um, and what, we've, um, what we've done here is I'm just gonna open up uh, one of them. And this is um, the left ventricular hypertrophy. And uh, so this is um, one of the, uh, the models we have. I'm actually moving that around right now myself. I'm, I'm um, manipulating that just using my browser. And so uh, this is actually being used in the College of Southern Nevada's program uh, as a way to uh, teach their students. And um, um, also uh, Mike Morales is uh, uh, in uh, a dialysis education services um, uh, vocational school in Los Angeles, uh, also using um, our inter uh, interactive 3D models like this with, uh, to teach their students. And, and the way that this works is you just go ahead, I'm gonna click say on the left atrium on the side here, the side menu, and now the left atrium is highlighted. I'll on, click on the pulmonary valve. It highlights that, where's the, uh, where, where the veins of the heart. So this is how students are learning the uh, different parts of the um, of, uh, org, in this case, um, you know, organs that are relevant uh, to a dialysis. And then we have an introduction for everyone uh, so that students can uh, uh, start learning about uh, these really these critical organs. And then just the last thing I'll just uh, mention here is we also, um, students and teachers, the way that they use this is they can just go ahead and um, share these. We have the short term, uh, short expiration um, QR codes. So actually for any of you uh, that are on, uh, right, uh, if you have your smart phones handy with you. If you just point your camera on your smartphone at the QR code, then the, um, this 3D model will actually load for you on your, um, on your phone. And so um, this, what we hear from students is the way that they use it is they wanna be able to study really on demand wherever they are at any time. And so if a lot of times students, they're, they're working part or full time while they're going through the dialysis tech certification program. So they're incredibly busy. And, um, and then um, maybe they're, 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 they have to catch a bus or a lift or they're, or they're riding in a car. And so they just uh, go ahead and uh, if they're studying this model that day, then they just uh, use this QR code so they can um, go ahead and uh, open that up on their smartphone and then just study that um, as they're during their commute, for example, or late at night. Um, uh, as an example, so um, that's um, that's uh, the uh, one of the three D models that we've got there. And then um, what I'll do is I will go ahead and continue back uh, to the slides here. Um, then what we've done is we've created uh, in terms of um, in terms of field trip videos, and I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of in, in a bit. But what we've done is um, as part of Project Sandy, we're focusing on uh, creating a um, uh, these for a variety of industries. Of course, we're talking about dialysis today, but everything we're doing is always focused on uh, science, techni um, technology, engineering, and math, and really focusing on certifications that can be obtained quickly in, in weeks or months, but not years. Uh, because people, they have a, they have a need, you know, they, if they're in a workforce development program, uh, they are typically in a, you know, they're in a situation uh, where they need to get to working uh, quickly. 
uh, in an excellent career that pays well. And, um, and certainly uh, dialysis uh, uh, checks all of those boxes and more. And, um, and of course, there's, it's successful. Anyone uh, with a high school de degree can go ahead and enter these programs, which is, uh, which is very helpful. Um, I'm not going to go into all of these details here, but just just you know, we are launching our first two field trip videos. Um, we've already created a, a master one. We're create, launching two more at um, a uh, workforce development um, professionals conference in Vegas next month, and uh, that one of those is going to be uh, for the dialysis technician. The other one is going to be for the um, we're including a biomed tech. Um, and that was um, in um, th thanks uh, hugely to Anthony and Dwellen for their uh, uh, for all their advice and input on that. Um, of course, with Anthony being a biomed tech, um, his expertise is, was was uh, hugely uh, helpful for us as we uh, create these uh, field trip videos and just really get the word out about these um, really outstanding careers that exist in healthcare. Um, so now I'm going to move on now, and I'm going to talk um, uh, uh, specifically about our simulation and what we've created. And um, and so, um, you know, with my virtual background, uh, which now this is just a static 2D, 2D image, of course, uh, but we actually have um, that's inside of our dialysis clinic. This photo that we're looking at here, um, this is um, on the, the on the left. Uh, this is. Um, inside of the water treatment room that we created. And that's one of our, uh, the um, uh, modules that, that we created along, it's uh, 15 lessons in total. And so um, what we are doing, and why, why are we doing this? It's because uh, we want students to learn by doing. And um, we, we want them to learn, um, we, we feel it's best if they can learn, um, ideally through a combination of learn virtually and learn in a person. Uh, we're, we are not trying to replace labs. Um, we may be able to, in some parts, reduce the length of the lab, but um, and that would be um, uh, programs are telling us that would be helpful. But um, but there's we we strongly believe there's some uh, teaching that is absolutely best where it's with a, a live real teacher in person. But that's not that's not always possible, and that's why we uh, we we like uh, being able to offer both. Um, and that um, that photo on the right, that's actually just um, um, obviously a, uh, one of the um, Fresenius machines and um, how it's offered at the College of Southern Nevada. So um, what I want to do, uh, I'd like to say a word before I move and show you the first um, simulation and, uh, or video inside of our simulation. And um, what I'd like to say is we get a lot are, um, you know, why um, we're, we're, I'll just say this, you know, very openly, we're, we're approached by companies all the time to create simulations for them. And we, we, we just say no, most of the time, um, some people think, oh, well, it's everything's going to be better in virtual reality, uh, which is absolutely not the case. Um, so there are there's a lot of times, a lot of examples in learning anything where the simply the most efficient thing that might um, for that student to learn may simply be by reading the textbook, reading a PDF, um, the, the, of course, the teacher's prof, uh, lecture, uh, the writing on a whiteboard, videos, uh, online videos. Those can be the fastest and most efficient way to learn. Um, however, there are specific things where learning in virtual reality is the best and, and it has been proven to be um, exceptionally uh, valuable uh, in terms of proving, uh, improving learning outcomes. And so really um, the two, the, the areas that we focus on, when do we build a simulation um, for in virtual reality? It's um, first and foremost, we focus on abstract concepts. And there are a lot of abstract concepts that are difficult to, uh, to, to learn in dialysis. M more on that in a moment. The second one we focus on is uh, mock skills. And, um, and so um, more on that in a moment as well. But there's just the third thing I wanna say is that what we've done is we've built out our simulation in a conversational way so that there's actually, it's not just a presentation of facts when we're talking about the theory, but it's, um, uh, it's they're literally uh, able to see, uh, see the kidney. They're able to rotate the kidney, manipulate the kidney. They're in converse, there are questions that the preceptor asked them that they then use the controllers to respond to. So we really wanted to make it as interactive as possible. 
In terms of the theory itself, um, so of our 15 modules that we have, what um, we do is like just, uh, for example, when we were working with the, um, the guarantors, well, we have multiple guarantors, our subject matter experts. Uh, what they said is uh, that, um, for example, that um, it's really um, the extracorporeal circuit can be quite confusing for people. Um, how the dialyzer works exactly can be quite uh, uh, confusing for new students or, or people that are onboarding uh, to become a dialysis technician. Um, also, um, you know, uh, when uh, when when uh, we were at uh, Nant um, just uh, just uh, recently uh, and in demoing our dialysis simulation there, we actually heard um, so there were some. Uh, I, I, I won't mention the names uh, out of confidentiality, but there was one woman that said, she said, you know, I've been in, working as an, uh, in dialysis for over 20 years, and she's, I still have colleagues who don't fully understand, how, uh, truly understand how the dialyzer works, um, even though they've been working in the uh, industry for years. So um, it just uh, t um, learning visually is really helpful uh, as a way to, um, uh, for people to learn these uh, abstract concepts. Then there are the mock skills. So the mock skills, um, literally in virtual reality, um, they're uh, passing a needle, they're helping take a blood sample. Um, there are multiple, they're, they're washing their hands, they're putting other PPE. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that um, uh, next. And then uh, the last thing is the conversational part. So um, I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, move in. Let me go ahead and show this uh, video here um, and We actually, I've, I've muted the uh, audio just so I can narrate over this, but we start inside of the reception area here. And um, so we can orient the new technicians. They're putting on their PPE here. Uh, they've, uh, there's a washing of hands. Uh, now we take them inside of the dialysis clinic. Um, and so um, now they're with their patient. So um, now, okay, this is the, uh, uh, this is the preceptor here uh, who is, uh, we see standing in front of us. And, um, and then we have the, uh, the patient, of course, in, uh, in his chair. And, um, but you can see the entire environment. Now, of course, this is just a 2D, uh, you know, a static video of it. It's not inside of virtual reality. So it's a, it's a, you know, most people have not been in virtual reality yet, but trust me, it's a very different feeling uh, to be in virtual reality. Um, and um, I'll just continue with this. So um, then what we have, there is a conversation going on. The preceptor would be talking, explaining some of the key concepts. Uh, as and you can see the patient moving around here. And um, uh, now we go ahead, there's, I'm just pausing this to, to highlight certain things. There's the, the washing of the hands that I mentioned, uh, that we have a whole module just on uh, hygiene. Um, and as I've learned over the last three years that uh, hygiene is absolutely, uh, of course, critical. Uh, it's the most common way that uh, infection is spread in, uh, in a clinic is what, what I've learned is that it's uh, through improper hygiene. Uh, we have what we call a learning circle. Uh, this is what we see here with the uh, kidney cross section. We're showing a diseased and a healthy kidney um, that um, students, they can go ahead and click on any of those eyes to, to learn more about that. And, um, and then I will uh, here. Uh, now this is one of the mock skills. So right now uh, the preceptor just asked, a pa you know, please uh, pass me the needle. So uh, preparing for cannulation, of course. Um, so that's um, that's one of the mock skills that we're showing. Uh, we're showing the interaction with the, uh, this is a Fresenius machine. Uh, so the interaction with machine. Now we're looking at the uh, extracorporeal circuit, of course, um, and um, and we're, we're showing that whole process. Um, and in a moment here, we're gonna actually, you can actually see the blood flowing there, uh, perhaps if it's uh, coming through. Uh, now, there, here's another mock skill is with uh, taking a blood sample. Um, so that's another thing that they're, the students are learning uh, in the simulation. So these uh, mock skills are really critical. And, um, and now we're going to go ahead. We're looking at, uh, of course, one of the pumps here and how that works. And they're hearing in the audio the role that uh, that pump plays um, as part of the uh, machine. And then the last thing I want to show you here 
is um, well, there's the dialyzer on the right, of course, and the students, um, we open up, we start with the students to show them the, um, the dialyzer inside of the uh, learning matrix here, and then they go ahead and touch the dialyzer, and they will be taken inside of the dialyzer itself. Um, so this is where, of course, um, as, as we all know, this is where waste is cleaned out of the blood. Um, but just um, how that actually works and just how small down to the micron level um, these uh, filters are inside of the uh, dialyzer is, is really extraordinary. Um, and um, I'm just going to just just to jump a little bit farther, you can actually see there we on the bottom all the key parts. Uh, creatinine, albumin, uh, uh, um, uh, dialysate, et cetera. And so um, that's, uh, that's how we take them inside the dialyzer. I'm gonna go ahead and um, move on now. Um, and what I wanted to do is just mention, we're actually partnering with um, the uh, uh, MEI Publishing. Um, so this is, um, um, and they of course are the publishers of the uh, core curriculum textbook. It's a standard dialysis textbook in America. Uh, CSN uh, uses their textbook, uh, DES in Los Angeles as well. And um, I just wanted to highlight, I'm not going to go through all this, but just um, to show you there, we've got on the left, uh, the core curriculum chapters, and then our alignment is in the middle uh, there in virtual reality. And then our 23 models, we show the alignment there on the right. So um, extracorporeal circuit, types of dialysis, access, cannulation, um, and hygiene, as well as the water treatment room. And um, so that's, uh, that's how we, we are aligned with that. And uh, they were also uh, the, some of the subject matter experts that helped us create this. And then um, what I wanted to highlight uh, now is, um, is um, some of the research that's already been done. What's not well known, I would say, by uh, most uh, people uh, you know, across America is just how much um, learning of virtual reality has taken off, um, not, in, not just in uh, multiple industries, but particularly in healthcare. Of course, of course, virtual reality is the biggest in gaming. It's, it's that, the gaming is the biggest uh, use of it, um, but, um, but let's say for enterprise or training purposes, um, it's, I don't, uh, if, if healthcare isn't the one industry using virtual reality simulations more than any other industry, it has to be in the top three industries. It's, it's extraordinary to see the universities and the companies, um, uh, community colleges, et cetera, that are, uh, that are, uh, uh, are using it. Dr. Richard Lamb here, uh, he actually does study uh, where he, he uh, studied hundred students at his clinic at the University of Buffalo. And um, that was a 25 page paper, research paper that he published. He, uh, we obviously we did not pay him a penny for the, for, to be included in that study. We had no relationship with him before he reached out to us and asked to include us for his research. And we didn't know if the results were gonna be good or bad or horrible or the, you know, we didn't, we didn't know. We, we were optimistic based on our, real world findings, uh, but the results were outstanding. And what Dr. Lamb found, I'm just summarizing a 25 page paper here, but he said um, that they were using uh, functional near infrared uh, spectroscopy. And um, so they were looking at brain activity in the brain. And one of the things that uh, he found is that using the second, the first bullet, they're using realistic 3D immersive environments as targeted interventions at critical times may help rebuild the current deficit in science learning. So I just want to emphasize that may, may help rebuild the current deficit in science learning. I mean, that's really a profound finding um, and that he found very specifically it um, has delivered higher cognitive dynamics, increases in attention and critical thinking, thinking um, in subjects uh, learning in, uh, through virtual reality. So um, this, just con this and many other studies have confirmed what we see with students um, uh, every week. Um, uh, uh, really in multiple places across the country. And the last story I want to close on is I want to tell you a Natasha story. Um, and then, um, and then um, uh, uh, I'll, I, 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 it's important to me to end with Natasha though. Um, so Natasha here, in the top left uh, photo there, you can see Tammy Westergaard, <clears throat> 
she was the state librarian at this at, at this point. This was a research road trip we were on. Um, Martika's on the right. She was the library director um, in Mar um, uh, in this uh, small little town, um, and um, and so uh, what happened was um, that Mar uh, Natasha is on the left, and um, and so this is a small little town, nine hours north of Las Vegas. It's a walking distance to the border with Oregon. That's how far north it is. Uh, up in the high desert. And uh, so when we uh, met Natasha, um, this um, what happened was uh, she actually was a librarian assistant. And, um, and Tammy uh, spoke to her after our meeting. We said, you know, um, there it could be a workforce development uh, funding to support you if you wanted to go through the College of Southern Nevada's uh, dialysis tech program. Might that be of interest for you? And I don't know if you can tell from the photo, but at, at this time, Natasha was eight months pregnant. Um, and so she said, actually, um, I would love the idea of becoming a dialysis technician, but there's no way I'm going to uh, leave my reservation um, in my community uh, because um, I've, I've got to she ended up having a, a very healthy baby boy. And um, and so in this uh, small town, that you, her town that's uh, on the bottom left there, the library's on the right. And that's a way that her first priority outside of her family and her tribe, she's a member of the Paiute Shoshone tribe. She lives on the reservation just outside of uh, Fort McDermott. And, um, and so um, she feels like she's helping provide for her community by being a librarian assistant. And so um, she said, I, you know, I, I can't move to Vegas for three months uh, to go through this program with my new baby boy, and I'm not going to leave him behind. Um, so uh, fortunately, um, because of the, the, the digital resources that we created and, and others that were created, um, she was able to go through the program remotely. She did, um, she did have to go through down to Vegas for a one week lab. And that was fine for her to do. And that was valuable to meet her fellow students and her teachers, of course. Um, but then uh, what happened was she did everything else from either uh, the, the res her reservation that she lives on or at her public library. Um, and then she went ahead and um, uh, she also went ahead and um, did her uh, clinicals in Winnemucca um, at, a, um, uh, at a clinic that was just about 50 minute uh, drive away and did that successfully. So that um, went, that went um, really well for her. And so she actually created this video. I'm just gonna play it to briefly so you can hear in Natasha's own voice what that experience was like. So um, the, la the last thing I just want to say, Natasha, um, is that she successfully graduated from the dialysis tech uh, uh, program at CSN, and that went so well for her that what she found was she gained newfound confidence uh, that she could really do well academically, that she said uh, very openly she confidence she did not have previously. And so what she did was um, she got so much confidence from that, she then decided that she actually could go and um, uh, obtain her bachelor's degree. So as we speak right now, uh, Natasha is, um, is enrolled in, in Western Governors University. It's an online program, so she can still be with her family, take care of her family, take care of her community. And she's getting her bachelor's degree right now in health sciences. So she is a librarian assistant to help her community. She's a dialysis technician and there are, there are actually multiple 
Shoshone who are on dialysis. It's not just the, the folks living in town, but even on her reservation that um, she's able to help. And, um, and now is getting her degree in, um, in health sciences. So um, we're just uh, really have, have found it uh, inspirational and uh, honorable experience for me to, to be able to get to, to uh, become acquainted with Natasha. And then the way that Nevada is doing this, uh, this is just um, the last thing I want to mention is they're, they're really, uh, they're just doing this uh, critically through the public libraries and everyone else that's in the community uh, practice that I mentioned, um, but all you need is your library card, which of course is free. And then you can enter, um, you can get started with uh, career navigation. And then um, depending on the career uh, workforce development, it depends on your financial status, of course, whether or not you could get all or part of it uh, possibly paid for by workforce development um, in, um, in Nevada. And uh, this is just, um, uh, I just wanted to end uh, here, just so you have my contact info, should anyone wanna reach out to me. And uh, these two QR codes, will we'll open up um, um, the libraries for us for the diocese technician and the certified nursing assistant, uh, should you want to uh, just uh, check those out anymore. And I will go ahead and end there. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. It's a very interesting uh, project, very interesting uh, thing, the things that Lifelike is doing, very interested with the, uh, especially with the dialysis education, especially with the biomed. I uh, just want to go to our Zoom audience and see if there's any questions that they may have for you that you may can answer. And if you're in the Zoom audience, just raise your hand and we'll bring you up on stage. I know the comments that we're getting back is people are really loving it. They love the, I think the main majority is this is so cool. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's definitely something that's making an impact and, and definitely, especially in the workforce development area and especially, uh, you know, helping the dialysis, edu dialysis uh, be a career option for people out there. Thank you for saying that, uh, Anthony, and thank you for the comments in, in the chat as well. Um, you know, it's um, the I, one thing I'd like to highlight is just one question I get quite regularly is the folks will say, well, um, what are the benefits of learning? What, why can't I just learn using video? You know, or, or how is learning a virtual reality uh, in a simulation different from learning in video? And, and in some cases, learning a video is 100% adequate and nothing more is needed than learning a video. But there are, um, in, in a simulation of virtuality that like we have for dialysis, you know, you, it's not possible to say, um, pass a needle in a video. You can only do that in virtual reality or, or in person, of course. But if you're not, I'm saying if you're not in person, um, yeah, what about, you know, helping take a blood sample? That can't be done um, in video, only virtual reality. Hygiene, uh, which is critical, of course, washing your hands, putting our PPE. I mean, you're literally doing these mock skills uh, in virtual reality and, and, and many others that um, I, I, I could list. So it's just, it's these, uh, really these mock skills that are really critical and that really separate uh, virtual reality uh, simulations. That's right, that's right. Well, I don't see any other questions. Let me ask uh, Tim over here. Tim, is there any other questions from any of our other uh, streams? Uh, so I think we're all good, Mark. If you want to have any last words, you're more than welcome. Stage is yours. I, I just want to I just want to thank uh, you, Anthony, and Joel, and your whole team again. And and I just um, I, if I could just end on on a really personal note, um, I. <laughs> Sharon's and uh, uh, Shante's uh, presentation is going to stay with me for a long time. Um, and uh, Shante mentioned just um, the depression that she went through. Uh, and my father was bipolar. Um, and so I uh, have been uh, surrounded by depression, um, you know, my entire life growing up. And I, I know what that uh, is like to be, so, uh, you know, dad, dad would have his great months or great, great years, but uh, I, I saw that how extraordinarily difficult that could be to um, to have a loved one go through uh, a depression like that. And um, and I remember asking him once when he was in his last terrible depression that he he then survived again. Uh, but I said, you know, are you having uh, suicidal thoughts? And he said, he said that he said not right now. He said the problem is is I feel like I'm in the bottom of a pit and I can't see how I can climb out. And, uh, and through an incredible therapist, 
and the love and support of his family and friends and exercise and, and for him for meds uh, meds meds aren't for everyone I'm I, I'm I'm no no place to prescribe uh, of course uh, but the, that that was really um, that and some and, and, and just some some time um, it, it all helped him get out of that depression and he had another uh, t over ten years of really a healthy uh, uh, life before he left us but um, I, I I I just wanted to say thank you again to. Uh, Sharon and Shanti for their extraordinary performance uh, uh, presentation. Yes, well, we appreciate it. We appreciate you appreciate you coming and presenting this at the summit. We definitely appreciate it. even sharing a little bit more about you personally. That really definitely helps. There's, there's something behind what you're doing. This is more than just coming up with a a program to help. You're doing something a little bit more. There's a meaning behind it, and I think we can tell. So, and in fact, I think everybody can tell. So we really appreciate that. Well, I don't have any questions. We've got um, Alexandra Rosa. She said, thanks for everything and everyone here. And um, Sharon and them said, God bless you, Mark. Uh, love and support. God bless you also. So we really appreciate your time and effort. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will be ending the live stream from our uh, channels. And, um, and then we'll be starting our next one soon. So uh, we appreciate everything that you're all doing. Thank you all. Have a great day.